It went on that way as I became increasingly restless and disturbed through the first semester. And then one day, just about when those of us who had passed were about to move up to 8A, from which we would enter high school the next year, something happened which was to become the first major turning point of my life. Somehow, I happened to be alone in the classroom with Mr. Ostrowski, my English teacher. He was a tall, rather reddish white man, and he had a thick mustache. I had gotten some of my best marks under him, and he had always made me feel that he liked me. He was, as I have mentioned, a natural-born advisor about what you ought to read, to do, or think about any and everything. We used to make unkind jokes about him. Why was he teaching in Mason instead of somewhere else, getting for himself some of the success in life that he kept telling us how to get? I know that he probably meant well in what he happened to advise me that day. I doubt that he meant any harm. It was just in his nature as an American white man. I was one of his top students, one of the school's top students. But all he could see for me was the kind of future in your place that almost all white people see for black people. He told me, Malcolm, you ought to be thinking about a career. Have you been giving it thought? The truth is I hadn't. I never have figured out why I told him, well, yes, sir, I've been thinking I'd like to be a lawyer. Lansing certainly had no Negro lawyers or doctors either in those days to hold up an image I might have aspired to. All I really knew for certain was that a lawyer didn't wash dishes as I was doing. Mr. Ostrowski looked surprised, I remember, and leaned back in his chair and clasped his hands behind his head. He kind of half smiled and said, Malcolm, one of life's first needs is for us to be realistic. Don't misunderstand me now. We all here like you, you know that. But you've got to be realistic about being a nigger. A lawyer? That's no realistic goal for a nigger. You need to think about something you can be. You're good with your hands, making things. Everybody admires your carpentry shop work. Why don't you plan on carpentry? People like you as a person. You'd get all kinds of work. The more I thought afterwards about what he said, the more uneasy it made me. It just kept treading around in my mind. What made it really begin to disturb me was Mr. Ostrowski's advice to others in my class, all of them white. Most of them had told him they were planning to become farmers. But those who wanted to strike out on their own to try something new he had encouraged. Some, mostly girls, wanted to be teachers. A few wanted other professions, such as one boy who wanted to become a county agent, another a veterinarian, and one girl wanted to be a nurse. They all reported that Mr. Ostrowski had encouraged what they had wanted, yet nearly none of them had earned marks equal to mine. It was a surprising thing that I had never thought of it that way before, but I realized that whatever I wasn't, I was smarter than nearly all of those white kids. But apparently, I was still not intelligent enough in their eyes to become whatever I wanted to be. It was then that I began to change. Inside. I drew away from white people. I came to class and I answered when called upon. It became a physical strain simply to sit in Mr. Ostrowski's class. Where nigger had slipped off my back before, wherever I heard it now, I stopped and looked at whoever said it, and they looked surprised that I did. I quit hearing so much nigger and what's wrong, which was the way I wanted it. Nobody, including the teachers, could decide what had come over me. I knew I was being discussed. In a few more weeks, it was that way, too, at the restaurant where I worked washing dishes and at the Swirlins. I've thought about that time a lot since then. No physical move in my life has been more pivotal or profound in its repercussions. If I had stayed on in Michigan, I would probably have married one of those Negro girls I knew and liked in Lansing. 
I might have become one of those state capitol building shoeshine boys, or a Lansing country club waiter, or gotten one of the other menial jobs which in those days, among Lansing Negroes, would have been considered successful, or even become a carpenter. Whatever I have done since then, I have driven myself to become a success at it. I've often thought that if Mr. Ostrowski had encouraged me to become a lawyer, I would today probably be among some city's professional black bourgeoisie, sipping cocktails and palming myself off as a community spokesman for and leader of the suffering black masses, while my primary concern would be to grab a few more crumbs from the groaning board of the two-faced whites with whom they're begging to integrate. All praise is due to Allah that I went to Boston when I did. If I hadn't, I'd probably still be a brainwashed black Christian.